Exchange 106 is like uh, any other projects that I, I work on. Um, it's not only the, the site that this, this is belong to, it's really belong to the, the country. I'm Ali, of course. Uh, last name is Muqaddasi. Being in the design and architectural uh, world for uh, about 40 years, this country is amazing to me. You know, the mix of culture that you, you see in here, the nature that it exists here. So looking all, on all of those really broad picture aspects of it, that's the poetry of the space for me. You design a building that it really suits this environment, but yet it's not really fixated into its time. It looks forward where the future is going to happen. In general, I think the whole world suffers from over-designing. You've got to really bring everything together. And then you say, stop, and you, you go about building it. Uh, you don't constantly mess with it. But that comes with experience. You know, once you have experience and you know from the get-go how you're bringing all of these elements together in a very beautiful package, then uh, there is no reason for you to over-design it. A lot of architects, they turn and twist, you know, because computer can do it. Not for me. I'm a more of a classical architect that I like for the buildings to find a place of their own. My, my father always said it well. He says, a flower is beautiful when it smells by itself, not inducing a smell to it. To me, Exchange 106 is one of those uh, representatives. One of, the, one of the most important aspects of this building was again looking at those series of the elite buildings that this building is, has relationship with. One of those elite buildings actually is Petronas Tower, which is icon. It's very beautifully done by, by a fantastic architect, highly detailed, elegantly executed, beautifully lighted. So no matter what I do here, I'm never going to be able to compete with it. So therefore, we took a slightly a different direction. We said the building is a, is a very simple ge geometrical pattern that is extruded. Let's stay with that and let's let it essentially die into the sky. I did close to 15 different uh, um, model studies of what this shaft should look like. So we end up with this, but we had all kinds of uh, studies, you know, that we were kind of looking at things. But then uh, this is the one that we, we, we finally said uh, it makes all the sense in the world. It's simple, elegant, and it, it speaks to the poetry of the site. By designing this crown, which is very unique, it's a signature of this building, so it creates a place of its own. It doesn't compete with the Petronas Tower, but it becomes a monument of its own. The texture on the, on the crown is, first of all, it's a beautiful materials that we build it from. You know, it has this uh, fantastic double layering glass with the interlayer that is uh, really phenomenal. From inside, you can see out, and from outside, it's, it kind of gives you a slightly a different personality. But it reflects the sky in a very true sense and it becomes part of the sky. And that's, the why, that's why that we, we've done that. And the genesis of the design of that is that essentially we took the, the texture that exists within the trunk of a palm tree. And the more you look it up, the more kind of blending and becoming a, a simple shaft. That's how we, we kind of took the essence of the plantation that you have here, and we transformed it into a a very modern, very elegant, very beautiful, very personable piece.
One of the unique things about this building is this building is a GBI Gold. So it reaches the, the magnificent elements of sustainability. The materials are, that are used in this building, they're recyclable materials. It, it's, a, uh, it's, it's all come together, 100% glass tower, but yet the glass are insulated. It has enough of it, uh, high performance and energy efficiency to them. So therefore, you, you don't gain heat in this uh, tropical environment. Now, glass or floor to ceiling glass. So therefore, I don't have to turn on the lights for this, uh, the perimeter zone of the building. It's all censored, so therefore those lights during the daylight hours are not on. No matter what, you cannot turn it on. So you know, so, so there are a lot of uh, beautiful, beautiful elements that is, it speaks of the, today's technology and perhaps a future technologies. I, as a designer, I'm a very hands-on person. I try to control everything that is going to go into a building, from the small detail of a door handle to a big idea of the superstructure and the finishing on the exterior of the building. One thing is always important for us is the efficiency of the building, life safety of the building, because ultimately our buildings are going to be occupied by people. We want to make sure that everybody who lives in our buildings, they are always going to be safe. So that's very important for us, and that's why we are really engaging in every aspect of this thing. When I walk into Taj Mahal, just the idea of putting me in awe and wanting to know who built it, in what condition they built it, and how it was executed, those are important things for me at my age. So I'm hoping that 50 years from now, those people that they visit this building, they will have just about as much questions that I have today for Taj Mahal or for uh, Empire State Building or others, you know, so therefore they can go and seek it, discover it, and find out about it, you know. <laughs>